I get pretty shy when you're making me wash my clothes. Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay Lohan and I'm doing the breakdown with Cosmopolitan. I don't really watch my old work. I think I get like a cringe factor when I hear my voice back. <laughs> I get very shy. Um, so I'll see it right when it's out, but other than that, I don't really like to, <laughs> I get pretty shy. <laughs> is Katie Heron. Ian, you put me in there too, that's not part of the plan. I didn't put you in there. You mean I'm really nominated? So that was a Mean Girls clip, uh, <laughs> and it's the scene where uh, Katie finds out that she's nominated for Prom Queen, and this day was a really fun day. I just had such a blast on making Mean Girls. It was so much fun. All of the cast, we were always just hanging out together. We became such a close family. It didn't even feel really like work at all. I don't think we knew what Mean Girls was while we were doing it, no. You know, we were just a bunch of kids making a movie, so you never really know what to expect. Maybe Tina Fey had an idea because her writing was so on point. <laughs> I get a lot of, it's October 3rd. <laughs> Um, I, I get that so fetch, but I never actually, that wasn't my line in the movie. On Wednesdays we wear pink, Glen Coco. <laughs> mean Girls was a lot of nonverbal acting for me because I had like no lines in the movie. It was like, it's October 3rd. <laughs> it was all um, pre-taped voiceover, which was frustrating because everyone was getting to talk. I'm like, I need to say something. <laughs> acting wise, I think my favorite moment was when I had to wear the Halloween costume because filming that was was actually really tough. All of the other girls got to dress really beautiful and hot and sexy, and I had to just dress like this disgusting dead bride ex-wife. <laughs> but I actually had fun helping do my makeup for that. <laughs> but I think that was my favorite. Also because Katie got really emotional in that scene. And so that was fun to be able to do and kind of act in a different way. I had an experience like Mean Girls because I finished Mean Girls and then I went back to regular school and I wanted to like be on cheerleading and be normal and there was girls on kick line and one of them like tripped me when I was walking in the hallway and girls were pretty mean to me so that's why I had to just I was like if I want to keep doing movies I have to just homeschool because it wasn't working out anymore I wasn't seen like that anymore as normal as I am as a person people didn't want to treat me like that so I, I went through that my sister did really bad it's dangerous when kids bully each other it was good that Mean Girls showed a little bit of that and a, and, and a dark comedic side of it just to lighten it up and I'm glad that everyone's learning to love everyone finally look at you a bunch of losers who couldn't sell health insurance even if your worthless lives depended on it I should line you all up against the wall and slit your fucking throats you fucking snorting fucks. that was an impression of my dad I'm just trying to lighten the mood that is a clip from sick note I remember that day of filming that scene I was so nervous because it was such a long monologue and it was very it was written very British in, in a way, so it was very different for me to even and say those words. Um, so I kept laughing <laughs> when I was doing it, but it was really fun in the end. And um, I had a great experience filming that show. It was really, the cast was so great. The director, everyone involved was amazing. Working with British humor for me took a little bit of getting like adjusted. I had to adjust myself to it and, and kind of just go for it. So what I'm thinking is, don't freak out, okay? I think we should switch places. When camp's over, I'll go back to London as you, and you go back to California as me. What? Annie, we can pull it off. We're twins, aren't we? Hallie, we're totally and completely 100% different. So, what's the problem? I'll teach you to be me, and you teach me to be you. <laughs> There's so much about the parent trap. I'll tell you a little behind the scenes. When I found out, it was my first movie audition, and my mom said, Linz, you can go on this audition, but can you do a British accent? And I remember so vividly that day, I was singing, I was singing in like, to a microphone Madonna, like a virgin, uh, running around the house. And so I went, I got, I did the audition, and my accent was, I guess, really good. <laughs> That's why I say I'm still good at it, because I feel like it will never, go away because I, stu I kept studying it and studying it. Even young kids now are watching The Parent Trap, so they still, it's, and I, I think people hear my voice and that's how they recognize me because it's even without seeing my face. <laughs> Week later, she got arrested. For what? You never told me this. Shoplifting, and no. I did tell you no, this. No, she was in the cafe having a cup of coffee in the cafe. She yeah. ordered a glazed donut. Like she started eating, and she got a sugar rush. Got a rush. <laughs> she was diagnosed hypoglycemic, and so she forgets she's in the cafe. 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 She's in the cafe
in, they don't show it in the movie, but by the end of the scene, we all ended up crying. I don't know where where Meryl and Lily Tomlin went and the direction they went, but then I started talking to them and then we just all started crying. And it was my first day of shooting with them and it was just phenomenal. I'm hungry. Got anything with sugar? You're five hours late. Mm. Can I just tell you what's really going on? Just so we don't get lost in what this really is? I'd like to know. <laughs> My mother and stepfather don't like I'm like, okay, I've seen enough. <laughs> that was Georgia Rule we just watched. And, and I felt so guilty playing that Rachel because she was so mean all the time in the beginning to people. But then she had such a good arc as a character where she really finds herself and you see you know, she was just a, like a lost soul and just needed to feel loved. Um, so it was a really great role. Jane is incredible. She's a force of nature and, and I, I love her. And she's just so beautiful and she's so wise and just her, her life has been so incredible that I was always asking questions. <laughs> love or money? Pardon me? The reason you're getting married. Love or money? I'm saving a life. Marrying a boy from my school. There's a lot of that going on these days. The government sends a check to the spouse for $135 a month. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not for the money. This clip was from the movie Bobby, um, which was a big also ensemble cast. And I was just so excited to work with Sharon Stone and try and get the times when Anthony Hopkins was filming and like Demi Moore would be on set. And I was just so excited to be there. I got to dress semi-period piece, which I really loved. So it was a really, really fun movie to do. Yeah. <laughs> I just didn't know if it was gonna be good or bad. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Hey, do you wanna go someplace with me? This was a clip from chapter 27, and the scene was really intense. I mean, Jared really immersed himself in the role, so he was really in character when we were there. Everything was the way that you're seeing it. I mean, it was, he really became the character. I really became her, just like the fan who just wanted to be around John Lennon and the people that love John Lennon. It was a very intense scene. <laughs> I love acting because it's another, I feel like it's another form of therapy in ways where you can just, you can take on the role of another character and explore someone else's feelings and emotions and, and then create something that other people can also relate to and it's, it's therapeutic to me. And it's really good to just listen instead of just remember, remembering your lines and the other person's last line <laughs> or last word. You don't always have to say something to get a reaction when you're acting. It's really when people get to watch you and it sinks in, that's when people connect with you. Self-doubt didn't kick in until the morning, when I woke up with a heart as cold and as heavy as Mount Everest. It was the day the cast list went up. Why had I been so certain that I was going to get the lead? I mean, Miss Bagoli didn't say anything encouraging. Look what the wind blew in. Look what the cat dragged in. Lola was so fun to play because she was just so passionate <laughs> and such a nerd when it came to like the things that she cared about. And I was still so young and I remember um, Megan Fox got spray tanned and I wasn't allowed to get spray tanned and I was really upset about that. <laughs> and I wanted my hair to be blonder for the character but they wanted it to be more red. So I was like trying to find a way that I could bleach it myself without them noticing. <laughs> Which I did <laughs> and then they noticed. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I love bell bottoms. I love the 90s fashion. I love everything. I love when fashion repeat, history repeats itself in fashion. And because then you see the younger generation wearing the stuff that you've worn, but then you actually notice you're getting a little older too. <laughs> Green was just your average 20 year old until the father she never knew left her something she never expected. Don't scream. <laughs> father left you something in his will. I never met my father. Well, at least now you know he was interested. This was so much fun to do because I never got to do anything remotely close to an action scene or blowing things up and shooting. And it's like very different for me to experience that on a set. Um, and it was a really fun day. <laughs> Some people follow the daily goings on and the life of their wife and children. Not me. I follow competitive high school show. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my God. Seriously? Did you just vlog about me during that last performance? You're welcome. 
It's already got over three million hits. And secondly, if you don't love show choir, then what exactly are you doing here, Lindsay Lohan? If you have to ask why a 12-time Teen Choice Award nominee is a celebrity right. judge, then you don't really understand what the word celebrity means. So funny how life comes full circle because now Cord Overstreet, who is on Glee, isn't falling for Christmas with me. I didn't know what to expect because when you go into a show like Glee, everybody's like a family there. So it was nice that like, the three of us that were in the scene really just like had to be with each other because it's we didn't know where we were supposed to be placed or anything. <laughs> I think it's important to like not take yourself too seriously always in life. You have to enjoy the fun sides of things. And I also think it's so much fun and so important to poke fun at yourself and just be humble and like point out the stuff because nobody's perfect. So that's why like one of my favorite things to do is Saturday Night Live because it's, it's the best opportunity to just like rip yourself apart and <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I'm really, I'm all about that. <laughs> Poking fun at yourself. It feels incredible. I mean, it's, it's such an honor. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, because when I was making the movies that I've made and growing up with everyone has been a real blessing. So it's it's definitely, see, I even get shy now and blushing. <laughs> um, so it's definitely an honor and it's a, an incredible feeling. <laughs> Thanks for hanging with me and going through my clips and some memories and make sure you check out Falling for Christmas in November. I hope you like the surprise at the end of the Falling for Christmas movie. <laughs> we put something cute together. 